I'll say that Marcus is my brother of 20 years, who's been an advertising guru, who's one of the people that helped to rebrand and reimagine the way, you know, the, the sort of connection between hip hop and music and culture and like brands and marketing. And, you know, apart from that, he's also one of the best people I know in terms, apart from the marketing side, which is great and all of that. But also like somebody, you know, founded TEDx Harlem, did all, and he does so much work in prisons with, with, with black men and, and people who are incarcerated, which is such important work, which is apart from that, he's a venture capitalist, runs his own VC fund. He's working in the NFT space. He's just a black superhero, basically. <laughs> you know, bro, it's uh, just trying to keep up with you. But good to uh, see you, man. Good to see yeah, you. Yeah, good to see you, my brother, man. Yeah, so my name is Obi. I'm co-founder of co Convener of Africa Soft Power. Um, like Marcus says, we work across all the spaces, man. You know, trying to bring and build the bridges between the, the global black diaspora and the African masses and just let everybody step into their greatness, basically. I think that's... Me and Marcus have been on this journey together for well over, I don't even know how long it is, man. It feels like it's been forever, but we're still moving. We're still going. You know, I think we saw at an early point that there just needed to be new narratives as Africans, as Black Americans, um, and to really build out the global diaspora. Um, now we have the metaverse, but you know, back then we were yeah. just laying brick to get it done. Exactly, exactly. I mean, and like now, you look at, look at, like you said, with the metaverse, you know, we're trying to do motherland, right? You know, and, I, and I'm excited by that. And I've got to bring you up to date. And uh, this African digital artist marketplace, these guys at Nandi, we've been talking with them. And I really, I'm really, really excited about the possibilities of what the metaverse offers to the black world, you know, of, of course, to the whole world. But it's just yeah, the I think over here, <clears throat> Probably one of the biggest opportunities is the health and wealth of Black people, the Black body, mm -hmm. uh, on many levels, uh, emotionally, mentally, physically, financially. Um, it is an era like none other I've seen. Usually it was, you, you know, you extract wealth from Black, black communities, um, wealth holders, you know, that um, sought to extract wealth and capital from Black people and Black communities. Whereas now, I think there's a greater idea of how you can create financial incentive by building wealth in Black people. Um, yeah, bro, let me ask you, man, because, you know, you do a lot of things in terms of your work from the VC side to your volunteer work and the work you do in prisons. What's the favorite thing about your work that you do? What's, the, what's that one thing that gets, gets you going and, you know, you don't want to stop. Well, I don't really, I don't do, I'm not VC. I'm not volunteer. Everything is, is sort of one, uh, one thing for me. And the one thing is I get to wake up every day and work for people of color and women. And, um, you know, whether it's volunteerism or um, making, you know, capital investments into enterprises, everything is a singular note which is how can this advance um, the health and reduce the amount of suffering for black people and women and how to empower black people and women. So, so that, that, I think that's the very favorite thing is I don't have to take yeah, off you, one hat and go into right. another space. It's just all, you know, one, one thing about uh, creating sort of reparations for, for our people. Yeah, exactly. I think that was the thing because, yeah, but, but I, I think what I was trying to get from you was, I mean, you know, me and you, you know, we talk yes, all the I mean, time. You know, I remember just thinking about your passion, talking about when you go into the prisons and being able to share with these black men that have been locked down and share and give them some hope, you know, give them some, some knowledge that can help them to sort of reposition and reimagine life because, you know, they found themselves in these situations and you and I know that a lot of these situations and possessions due to the crime are due to this historical narrative of, of America That's and how right. it has been towards our people and how the prison system works around our people as well. So, I mean, yeah, talk to me about that. Well, I mean, I do, I do am very hopeful. I think, you know, for 400 years or more, uh, we have been captive uh, in a land 
that has sought to create pretty, um, you know, just very harmful systems to oppress our people and to extract wealth from them. Criminal justice or mass incarceration is one leg of this systemic race, racist system. In my opinion, it also happens to be the weakest leg of the stool of systemic racism. Mm. Um, and so I'm hopeful that in our lifetime, we can dramatically reduce the character, size, and scope of prisons and jails in America. And we can eliminate the financial gain that is the driving force behind locking up um, Black bodies um, and women's bodies, to be very frank. So that's what I'm very hopeful about. Um, I think that there's never been a time where I have been in a prison where I didn't meet someone who I thought actually belonged in prison. That's a big statement I just made. I thought wow. people needed therapy. I thought they needed counseling. I thought they needed school. Um, I thought they might need mentors, but I didn't think that they were better served by being in present. Um, and so I think that's the work to be done is maybe there is financial incentive for helping people to repair. And that is where we can place, you know, the financial gain is by helping people to get their footing in life, helping people to um, find jobs, start businesses, um, heal their, their minds, their bodies, their souls in order to go forward and lead productive lives. And that has become a big part of my um, you know, strategy for investment is investing in things that are going to um, lower recidivism or the number of people that go back to jail. So um, I'm sort of like a re-entry, people who are re-entering um, community and society, right. re-entry kind of thinker. Um, and I think that as an investor, there's some pretty cool ventures and things that are investable that will help people to, to make strides in life. Now, that's great, man. I mean, you know, the thing about it is, and like you said, I think the interesting thing about what you do and how you do it is that sort of how you explain that sort of narrow focus, which is really at the end of the day to empower and enable our communities and our people in every aspect of life and then every opportunity. And that's such a noble thing. I mean, you know, I'm not even sure I've really heard anybody really say that like that before. Well, yes, you did. You did. Um, mm -hmm. The words of the immortal teacher and prophet Bob Marley, emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our free. minds. This is the, the fulfillment yeah. of that prophecy of Bob Marley. Um, and the words or the fulfillment of that pro prophecy happened through these conversations, investing in companies, um, you know, setting up programs, any number of ways that we're, we are doing that work that, that Bob Marley prophesied. You know, it's, it's so weird because yesterday I was having, you know, you know, I'm doing, I've started this documentary on the journey of Afrobeats, man, you know, and it's like, you know, it's a 500 year journey. It's not like it's, wow. it's the last 20 years. Right. And that's wow. really the journey of black people and black music. And one of the things we were talking about, we're interviewing a guy who used to live next to when he was growing up, his dad was a used to own a club called Kakadu. This is like 1969, 1970 in Lagos. This is the number one spot in Lagos, right? And Fela Kuti is performing at this spot around the time when Fela goes through his whole transformation because one unknown thing, well, it's not unknown, but a lot of people don't really talk about it, is that Fela's trans a lot of Fela's transformation came after the Los Angeles sessions, right? Oh, wow. Fela comes out, yeah, Fela comes out to LA in 69. You know, Teddy Kennedy's being killed. James Brown is singing, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud, right? He's got this beautiful black American woman who's educating him, right? Giving him the books and the knowledge. And he's reading, you know, Langston Hughes and El Malik Shabazz and understanding the black struggle in America. And of course, he's a, he, I mean, he's a scholar. He's coming out of Trinity College in Dublin, coming out from a long line of serious, you know, people. His mother's like the first sort of suffragette, the first women leader in Nigeria. I mean, his mother literally 
um, was involved in our independence as a nation and is a serious legend, right? Who's even perhaps even more radical than her son. <laughs> wow. wow. I'm telling you for real. And then, so this guy's talking about how he's like 10 years old and out of his bedroom every day, he can see the stage, right? Because it's his dad's place next door. And every day he's watching Fela, you know, and he said, and he said something, he said, you know, Fela told us the truth. We just weren't paying attention, you know? So Fela said, listen, music is the weapon. I mean, he said it severally. It's the name of an album. He said, he said Africa, center of the world. He said it. It's not theoretical. Right. You know, yeah. Black president. Black president. I mean, he said, Fela, literally, everything Fela said it keeps happening. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's important for this audience to realize that this conversation, and for those at home, there's no script here. There's no exactly. guide. There's no question. This conversation is as free-flowing and engaging as it is because this is a conversation that Obi and I and a group yeah. have had over 20 plus years. Yeah. It started when we met over a series of 10 days at a hotel <laughs> in London. There was no agenda other than let's get on the same page for the exactly. next 50 to 100 years, right? And 100%. sometimes for this audience, sometimes you need to do that. You need to find, as Obi said, the people who you vibrate with. My father says the people who you hum with. You have to find the people who you hum with. Now, your, your, your dad is a wise man, man. Right, okay. And yeah. you need to sit in London in a hotel for 10 days. Me, you, Kudro, Bihai. Bihai, <laughs> Rob, you know, and and this conversation and these uh, platforms, no, these, all of these frozen. platforms, venture capital, and uh, the media platforms, these are all things that we spoke of uh, 20 years ago. And now those seeds are bearing fruit. So for this audience, we need to understand that I, I do agree with Kanye on one thing. Let's, let's maybe not call it Black History Month. Let's call it Black Future Month. Let's start yeah. writing the future. No, I, write, I like that a lot. And I also don't like the restriction of Black History Month, you know? Like, I think black history is every day. You understand? So Absolutely. when they say what black person inspires you, it's my father, right? Yes. You, my know, what, what, you know, my parents, that, that's who inspires me, right? And, you know, from being in UCLA in the early 60s, being part of the black nationalist movement before the Black Panthers in Los Angeles, right? So my father built that in me from day one. And well, I understand. And, li and likewise, as you know, my father played at Festac 77, and brought home the news of who our sisters and brothers across the pond in Nigeria were. So I still have a poster of Festac 77 sitting in my family living room. You know what and I'm saying? Put a seed in me. That is the reason why we were able to create that bond across the pond um, 20 years ago. And, it's and when people talk today, I say to them, you have to understand this is my family here, you know? I don't do black American, African American. This is, these are my people. You know, I don't know where you're from, but I'm black. <laughs> so wherever I see black people, they're my people. I don't care where they're from. I don't care what tribe they are. I don't care what nation they're from. I just love black people. I love all people, but hey, you know what? You know how it is. It's the vibration, man. And you know, there is uh no not, no experience like landing at the airport in Lagos and knowing you've got that crazy drive, uh, <laughs> you know, but still every time I land, I drop to my knees and yeah, I kiss the soil. Yeah. I am home and it's our it's soil. Home. And there's it's no you. feeling, wherever you are in the diaspora, there's no feeling like coming home and putting your feet on our soil. This and is it. So, And I invite everybody to come, forget it, man. Don't be scared by the news or the hype. You know, Lagos is rocking even with all the stress. Listen, <laughs> be excited can, about it. Marcus can confirm. <laughs> It'll change your life. <laughs> yeah, man, that's it. That's it. I mean, it's the whole thing. So, bro, tell me, um, how are you keeping up, you know, give me a day in the life, you know, between shooting uh, Nigerian Idol, 
um, your documentary. How, what are you juggling right now? What's man, on I'm your juggling, plate? I'm juggling all sorts, man. I'm juggling life, trying to make sure I spend time. My, do my daughter's like my boss, man. My daughter's like 10, about to be 11, far too intelligent, far too, you know, so I, I can't even answer the questions. I'm having to like go and read to come up with that. So try and do that, spend some time with the wife. But at the same time, like, I'm, ex I'm, exci I'm excited about, especially about the whole NFT and the metaverse situation, because I think, you know, and I'm really interested about it from the position of the storytellers, right? You know, doing a lot of work with the Nigerian NFT community to sort of bring them online. And, well, not to bring them online, they're online already, but we're trying to, we're trying to do some collaborative things. I'm collaborating as I always do. Yeah, let me ask you this thing, because like, I'm pretty sure this situation is the same with Black America as it is with Nigerians and everybody. You know, Black men, we, we pretend we're like Superman and we can't die. We don't take bullets and shots. So we tend not to take care of ourselves. So this whole perception of the invincible Black man and, you know, and therefore, so healthcare, wellness, you know, mental health, we don't engage these things and we don't deal with them. And therefore, you know, it's like as if accepting that you could have failed is a real problem for Black men, you know? Hey, man, I'm, I mean, I'm an alpha male. I know I've failed enough times, right? I know I've dealt with mental health issues. I know I've been depressed. You understand? But it seems to be some shame around these issues. But meanwhile, everybody has the same issues, right? And the whole pandemic just manifested it worldwide, you know? Because if you were sitting alone or sitting at home, you're in a relationship, or you didn't even know the issues in your relationship. So when you're actually just now locked up together you have to deal with this stuff you can't run away from each other anymore it's like so i i think this whole thing was a big shift and i'm hoping that it makes black men and black it's people able to be more open more in terms of how we deal with our mental health and our health and just that culture of talking about these things and being open and i know you're somebody that's been you've been you've been way ahead of me in this space i mean you're you're a more evolved version of me that's what i always say well, you know, <clears throat> whether through the mechanism of slavery or colonialism, um, we have always been under attack. So let's yeah. just start there. Um, you know, in like, America, like trauma. the trauma is endemic, right? That's what you're saying. Trauma is endemic, bro. You know, and so when you start there, you realize here in America, they used to say of my ancestors, all they did was sleep and eat. Yeah, I heard that. Mm -hmm. The shiftless, lazy black person, all he does is... Yeah, 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 eat, yeah. Sleep and eat. They diminish, they diminish, they diminish. The language diminishes, the approach diminishes. Well, but, you know, the, the reality is that with trauma, what happens is the body needs rest. And so the whole infrastructure of racism, colonialism, was to deny people, deny black people of rest. Mm. So that you're always running from this place of scarcity, right? You're always wow. in this stressed, anxious state, destabilized from your power. The earth is here to give us rest. We sink mm. into the earth, you know, because the earth is here to hold us and give us rest. And the first, very first thing that they did was deny us rest, right? That's crazy. And so that, that perspective is crazy because once you denied rest, you're permanently stressed. You're permanently stressed. Permanently you, you, you can never sleep with without having one eye open, right? Yeah. And so in 400 years, we've never been able... To that's fully probably rest. the most important thing is we've been denied rest. And so that is, in so many ways, I think of how our wellness struggle is, where do we get rest? Hmm. Right? Where do we get rest right now? Where are we able to restore our minds, rest our minds from the anxiousness you know, um, we have to be careful as black people. You know, when we engage each other as black men and I say, how you doing? And your answer is, oh, I'm just hustling, right? What we're doing is we're announcing that we are in an anxious state. Yeah. You know, we want to get, we want to get black. We want to relieve our people of the yeah. hustle. We want to give them rest. Exactly. For we want to be able to say, I'm just chilling. I'm just chilling. Right, um, relieve you of the need to bend twelve ways, you know, for a dollar. Yeah, when, to feel like you have to compete with your brother just to 
just to wake up in the morning, just to get by in the morning. So it's a, it's a whole new value system that we've got to come into where we see our health as our wealth, as our greatest asset, you know? Um, and so, you know, I have chosen as an investor to lean into this conversation by investing in um, black led companies that are focused on areas of black health. Um, you know, we're on a live stream right now. There are so many amazing ventures that are live streaming therapy visits with competent mm -hmm. black care and competent black care providers. Um, those are the companies that I'm invested in. And, th and that is, you know, I want to empower uh, this revolution around enterprises and thinkers that want to restore the health and wealth of black people. Yeah. Do you understand? So the thing about it is we've been and we are extremely, extremely innovative and we are totally connected to nature. I feel that like you said, music is vibration, and that vibration is connected to your essence. And the essence is in that cosmology that defines the African and the Black person, wherever they are in the world today. But that's the actual connection, because that's the transmission. I look at it like our music is code, you understand, through the, through the eras, because we use our music to dance, we use it to bury, we use it to marry, we use it to communicate war, we use it to communicate peace. And every single thing has form and function. It's not random. It's not some tribal people running around doing random things. Everything is specific. Yeah. And I think that this is hopefully as the world with technology and everybody can relearn their narratives because you know how it is. Narratives, the storytellers own the world. And unfortunately, Africa has not told its story. Yeah, right. I, was just saying that I, I was just saying that I strongly felt that those of us on the continent should be like embracing that fact and enabling that fact. I mean, one of the things that I always think about is when I think about Africa's GDP in 2022, and I think about the fact that black American women pretty much spend the same money on an annual basis as their own economy, I'm not even adding black American men to that, right? I'm like, we in Africa need to be paying much more attention to our black brothers and sisters in America, working with them, building with them. That is the way to for the future for us. And you know me, you I've said this a thousand times over the last 20 years, right? Listen, Professor uh, Asika, I just want to sign up for your uh, advanced <laughs> yeah, man, just, class, brother. Yeah, man, you go get me in a Harvard, get me in Harvard, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're at time, bro. Um, let's uh, yeah, let's do this again. Might be up. I'm telling you, man. I'm, I mean, I'm, look, man, talking with you on these things is just incredible. But let me ask you one last thing. How, what do you do to take care of yourself? Well, what, I think what, you what's know, your me uh, time? Yeah, I think you know yoga is... Uh, I know. First of all, yoga is just a word. I think what yoga, how I interpret yeah, yoga, it... Yoga is from us, bro. Of course. You know of, course you know. of course I know that. Of course I know yeah, that. You know, you, know, you know that. You know that. Um, they just took I, it to Asia. You know? it's yeah, cool. no, I, I think I might write my book on the African exactly. roots of yoga. For sure. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yoga just means coming home, right? Coming home to self um, mm -hmm. and dwelling in this house. And this house is connected to the whole universe. And it is through that expansion that I get out of the pressures of day to day and living in America, a racist society, and what it be means to be a man. Um, it's this place of, of, of rest. It, that is what yoga mm -hmm. is. That's a beautiful thing, man. I, I tell you what, I mean, we're going to end up the conversation, but I'm jealous of that because I think that's what I need as well. You know, I think we all need to find that place of rest. We all need to know that, you know, rest gives us the strength to go forward. Yeah. And, that's right. And I, and I think for all of us, that's the most important thing. That's the most important thing. But the most important thing is to, go, you know, that, that to me is that that's the whole win-win. You know, we go forward together. We win together. They can't stop us. I don't Agreed. know. Stoppable. <laughs> hey, bro. Love you and love your family. I you love you, bro. I'm telling you, man. Love always, bro. Take care, oh, man. Absolutely. All right. See you soon, bro. All right. Peace. Peace. Bye.